Today, we are looking at 1 Timothy chapter 5 and the first couple of lines of chapter 6. The Apostle Paul is giving Timothy some practical advice, and at the same time, we get a glimpse of how Christians established an early welfare system that focused specifically on widows. Now, widows had the potential to be one of the most marginalized groups in the first century. Because of the misogynistic culture of the Roman Empire, women were completely dependent upon men. And this was more than just a cultural sediment. In fact, it, it, was, it was an oppressive treatment of women that was a part of Roman law. In, uh, in, chap- or, I'm sorry, in uh, the 5th century BC, Romans established what they called the 12 Tables of Roman Law. Table 4 was about the rights of familial heads, and it gave men complete authority over women and children. They even had the right to kill their family members in many circumstances. The next three tables were specific to women and, very clearly, (laughs) not to their advantage. If a woman were older, had no children to support her, and lost her husband, she would be almost instantly destitute. Now, in light of the call of Jesus to love our neighbors as ourselves, the early Christians needed to establish a a system to serve these women. So what we see in this chapter is a strategy for managing resources for the sake of serving women that have found themselves in this terrible situation. As you read, starting at verse 3, Paul proposes an approach that divides women into several categories for the sake of apportioning resources. In verse 5 and 6, he explains why. Now a true widow, a woman who is truly alone in this world, has placed her hope in God. She prays night and day, asking God for his help. But the widow who lives only for pleasure is spiritually dead, even while she lives. When Paul mentions the widow who is who lives for, for pleasure, only for pleasure, He's referring to someone who is taking advantage of the system. His point is that we need to help those that truly need it, lend aid those who just need a little assistance, and be wary of those who are simply attempting to live off the charity of others, despite having alternatives. Paul's language is particularly harsh uh, regarding that last group, likely because he recognizes that they have the potential to essentially rob resources from, from women that truly have no other alternatives. Now there's there's one particular group of women in this passage that piques my interest. Listen to this beginning at verse 9. A widow who is put on the list for support must be a woman who is at least 65 years old and was faithful to her husband. She must be well respected by everyone because of the good she has done. Has she brought up her children well? Has she been kind to strangers and served other believers humbly? Has she helped those who are in trouble? Has she always been ready to do good? Now, we don't get much to work with here, but apparently there were women identified as being on a list, and and they were being sustained entirely by the faith community. At age 65 in the first century, these were women who were past the age to be able to to earn any money and were very likely, uh, unlikely to get remarried. So the point here is that these women who had likely been actively serving the body of Christ and had a history within the community for being role models for everyone, deserved the care of the faith community. Now, as we consider this chapter as a whole, that seems to be the common theme that we recognize and respect others, especially those who have served and mentored us. In our selfish culture, it is easy to ignore those that society has deemed past their prime. The Apostle Paul here is teaching that, that we should treat all people with respect, and in the case of widows, they should be treated as treasures. We should never be dismissive of individuals or groups. And in fact, we should take particular care to shower God's love on those who are most critical in nurturing each of us. So as we go out today, let's be aware of those mentors in our lives um, who we may be 
inclined to be dismissive of, but recognize that in truth, they have been fundamental to the world we live in and in fact have guided us in our spiritual journey. Let's pray for them, support them, and love them. And as we do so, be witnesses to Christ's love in this world. Have a great day, everyone. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.